Okay, tonight we are taking a look at the final part of Hiram's Boot CD, the Linux portion. Now, the Linux distribution included with Hiram's Boot CD, at least in version 15.2, is something called Parted Magic. And this is a collection of mainly hard disk stuff, but there's some Linux risk environment whatnots. So let's just go ahead and take a look at it and see where it goes. Now off the bat you, um, of course with Linux you have a lot of customization options. You can boot in many different ways with low RAM, with uh, something called XVESA instead of XORG. You can turn off ACPI, you can just have the, uh, have the console. You can load NVIDIA drivers. Intel. You can just boot into uh, Clonezilla if you wanted to without going into Parted Magic. You can boot into NWipe instead of uh, Parted Magic and graphics and all that. And of course you have many different language options. But for us, let's just go ahead and start with default everything. So it does the Linux boot up deal. Alright, so as it starts up, we're greeted with the Parted Magic desktop. <clears throat> and we have some desktop icons, and we have some system properties and whatnot. We've got CPU usage, history, memory, uh, running processes, and all that uptime. And uh, the default is 800 by 600, but of course we can increase that by going to screen layout and let's get it up to 10 by 7 makes the wallpaper look like shit but that's okay so we'll close <clears throat> I apologize for that and uh, let's just start with what's on the desktop we have file manager, keyboard a uh, wireless network manager and gparted and this is a very, very, very useful tool. You can create, edit, uh, shrink, grow partitions. You can change the flags. All very, very easily. And uh, let's just go ahead and uh, let's try to resize this partition. Okay, so this is Windows. We'll just go ahead and resize it. And you just graphically pull this back. Hit resize. And uh, let's just go ahead and... Let's make that a, <clears throat> we'll make it NTFS files, porn, actually. Okay, so we have a, so it sort of sets it up in sort of like an order. So the first thing you want it to do is to shrink, then I want it to create a partition, and yeah, that's simple enough for now. And then you hit apply, and it does all of those operations for you. So it is shrinking that partition, and there you go. Now you have a partition here, a partition here. Perfect. <clears throat> What's next? System profiler. This is default Linux stuff. Disk health. You can check... I assume this would check uh, some smart information. Does not support smart, so it can't do any self test or anything like that. Firefox, obvious. Disk eraser. Now, this is sort of a. Hmm. There's a lot going on with this. Many different ways to wipe a disk. We can use DD, we can use. Uh, something else, we can use a shred command instead of dd, we can erase the MBR only, and we can do a uh, secure erase, and this is for more uh, solid state memory that supports a secure erase, I guess, a function. And the one I left out is nwipe. And this is what I was talking about in the first video, that if you're... Uh, Derek's boot and nuke does not actually work and doesn't detect any of the drives, you can use this. 
and this will detect all of your drives. And all of the commands and all of the options are exactly the same as Derek's boot and nuke. Like we can change the method, we can pick whatever kind of strength of wipe that you want. Really the only one you need is one pass, but <clears throat> let's say fine, Department of Defense. So we'll select it. We'll select our drive. Let's do a so we start with F10. And it will now wipe the drive. And of course we have our statistics over here, the runtime, the uh, ETA, how much uh, CPU load you're causing, how fast it is, and if you're getting any errors. Let's go ahead and just quit for now. Okay. And disk cloning. This is Clonezilla. And the problem is I don't have a Clonezilla backup, and I just wipe the drive, so... It won't really help us. Let's say, let's create an image. And I guess you can forward it to a server or mount a image from a server. We'll skip. It didn't find anything, I don't think. We'll use beginner mode. Uh, forget it. <clears throat> if you know how to use Clonezilla, this would be very valuable. But there's plenty of other DOS and Windows options that are much, much easier and better in every way. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the uh, fake start menu. We've got, let's see, basic Linux stuff, calculator, calendar, PDF viewer, text editor, another text editor, TrueCrypt, so you can mount all your TrueCrypt volumes, file search, the basic stuff. It also has a clam, a clam AV uh, scanner. Of course the desktop settings, uh, an image viewer, uh, some information regarding parted magic. We have a uh, disc burner. We can test the audio. We have a music player. Pretty useful. Networking. We can download Flash and Java and some Clam AV um, definitions. We can have an IRC client. We've got a text web browser. I assume it's links. Uh, VNC viewer. A GUI for Nmap, which is kind of interesting. Let's try it out. Let's do contoso.com scan. I don't think anything exists at that site, but that's all right. <clears throat> so I guess it's not seeing any ports open. Or maybe it's not able to scan. I don't know. Yeah, let's move on. So there's a graphical version of Nmap, which I don't know why you really need that. It, it's like one command. It runs pretty well. <clears throat> let's get into the beef of it. Command line file manager. So it's there it is. You can view your file system from command line. Midnight Commander. That's cool. Sort of like, uh, I think it's Total Commander on Windows. So that's nice. Uh, Clonezilla, we already looked at. Disk Health, we already looked at. Erase Disk, we already looked at. Ghost for Linux, let's take a look. So I assume this is a compatible uh, copy or clone of Norton Ghost just to run on Linux. So let's change file mode, let's see what happens. Pick device, oh god, what is all of this? There's quite a lot going on, and I assume there was a lot going on with um, with Norton Ghost. After all, it cost money, and it could not find a drive, so we can't even clone anything. So, never mind. We'll close that. Uh, let's see. Hardware Lister. This will, I assume, list all of your files. We do a refresh, and it sees the computer, and it doesn't see much else. Motherboard, virtual motherboard of course, 
let's move on. Install distro to USB drive. Of course, UNet booting, you can pick a distribution, any distribution, the version, and then either have a disk image, or actually, no, pick a disk image, or use this downloader. Plug in your USB drive, and there you go, you got bootable Linux. Very nice. Lilo setup, if you really, really want to set up uh, Lilo. It's like grub, but worse. Mount devices, it, well, it views devices, and you can choose to mount them or not. Park clone. Let's see. Well, what is this? Uh, I guess it's some kind of command line deal. Not interested. Uh, Gpart, we already looked at. Partition image. Now this is, uh, hmm, what do we have? We can, I guess, copy and save and restore partitions. And you can upload them to a server or download them from a server. A lot of server stuff going on with Linux. What's next? Photo Rec. It will... I think this was on the uh, DOS version. It would let you try to recover files, I assume. It's NTFS. And hey, you can see everything. That's nice. Um... That is correct. So I assume at this point it is going to try to recover the data that we partially wiped with uh, that N wipe Derek's boot and nuke. And it's going to take a very, very long time to try to recover all of that, so we will cancel. Rocks File Manager looks terrible. Just awful. So we will move on to Rock's Term. So it's just a terminal. Terminal emulator. R-Sync GUI. You can set up uh, backups and all of that kind of stuff. Pretty useful I suppose. Safely remove USB hard drive. Saving parted magic, if in case we want to save this to a partition. Space FM, a uh, file manager. I believe this is the default file manager with parted magic. System profiler and benchmark. Again, this is a uh, Linux thing. System stability tester. Let's check it out. Okay, so it sees it's Intel, it's <clears throat> running Linux. Let's do a run. It has passed something. Fonts, there are the fonts. Update. No, I don't want to update. How about 128 million digits? Run. I don't understand how this would be helpful. I guess you can do CPU stress testing, but according to this thing, it's only using 51% uh, of the CPU. It, well, it has frozen this, uh, this program. I don't know how I get out of it. We'll just move on. Forget it. Task manager. Hey, maybe we can use this. Okay, so what's using 50% of the CPU? Why doesn't it tell me? If I could just find it, this would be much easier. System Stability Tester. I'm sure it's not called that in this program, or this task manager. Sys Tester, let's stop it. Stop. Kill. 
Yes, kill task. Do it. Kill. Oh, come on. You're being such a wuss. Term. Do it. Forget it. It doesn't work. <clears throat> Temperature monitor GUI. Well, if we had any sensors, this would show our uh, temperatures, but... Nope. Test disk. Uh, this is sort of the same thing that was on the DOS video. UDP cast disk cloning. Now, why would you want to use UDP? Uses an Ethernet multicast so that interested receivers profit from a data stream originating from a single host. Thus, sending data to multiple hosts takes no more time than it would sending to a single receiving host. Why? I don't understand why would anything want this, though. Why would you want to back up to multiple servers, first of all? Second, why would you want to use UDP for backing up, you know, something like files where you want consistency and reliable fucking transport not like UDP this is stupid this is Linux logic right here UDP for file transfer get the fuck out of here so that wraps up pardon magic and there's a couple more DOS things I wanted to look at before ending this video and ending this series so let's just go ahead and do that now uh, we'll reset and of course like I said earlier the easier way to uh, to run Derek's boot nuke I believe we can do it from DOS programs to get to it it's at end wipe, but I don't remember how to get to it. Oh, I do now. Never mind. Back, back. Next. Uh, shit, how do I get back? We'll just reset. Alright, and then, like at the beginning of the video, you can load to uh, different things. Like instead of loading directly to the desktop, you can load to Clonezilla. Let's try loading to end wipe see what happens so it is loading all of the uh, Linux stuff it loaded before except and we gotta give it a minute there it goes here we go eventually Okay, so it loads directly into NWipe, and this would be just like booting into uh, Derek's boot and nuke. Um, you know, you get all your options there. Although it doesn't tell you what the keys are, that's kind of interesting. So you have to know to hit M for method. But how do you go back? Like, it, it would show in this bottom bar here. See, now it says J up, K down, space select. And you have to know to hit F10 to uh, start the wipe. So maybe it's not as good. Maybe it is better to just load into Pardon Magic and then run and wipe from there. And that's really all I wanted to talk about. And that'll wrap up this series. I hope it wasn't too boring. Uh, obviously this Linux video is much, much shorter than the... Uh, Windows XP one, but I do hope that there was some kind of value gained from this. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to be doing videos on, really. I mean, the the malware that I was looking at before, all of the rogues are really, really have been drying up. There's a couple new ones, but I haven't really gotten a good way to record them, get my hands on them. I'll probably be looking at those soon. Uh, as for ransomwares, if you guys want, I can make a video on different ways to remove ransomwares. But they're really pretty much all the same right now. It's basically, you have the FBI block screen thing, and then when you reboot out of it, 
and boot, try to boot into safe mode, it just kicks you out of safe mode and reboots the computer again. So, I'm not sure if there's anything really to record a video on about that. <clears throat> but, I mean, I'll probably just play it by ear like I have been for the past, what, like year or two? I said that rogues were going to be gone like two years ago or a year and a half ago. They're dying. They're not completely gone, but... Anyway, that's enough ranting for one video. Uh, thank you very much for watching this series. Whoever stuck it through all the way through, I greatly appreciate you. And, again, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate the support. And, you know, if you have any suggestions for videos, please tell me about it. Please send a private message or something or a comment or whatever I'll read it so thank you for watching